Praise the Lord. God is good to us. And welcome to another virtual service. I'm Pastor Les Herod from the Eden Church of God of Prophecy. And I want to remind you that Jesus loves you. He cares about you. He knows what you're going through. Uh, you are on his mind. So trust the Lord. I have some great news. The Lord willing, next Sunday, that will be Sunday, May the 17th, we are going to be having a worship service, uh, a parking lot service at our facility. So you'll be hearing more details about that. That'll be Sunday morning, May 17th. So we're excited about that. We'll have to stay in our cars, uh, but we'll do the best we can. So I'm just excited about an opportunity to see everyone again. So I say thank the Lord for that. Also, Saturday the 16th, we're going to have a special time at the church honoring some recent graduates. We had three graduates. And we're going to have a, a special event at 4 p.m. on Saturday. It's going to be a drive-through type uh, graduation celebration. The graduates will have a table set in front of the church, and we'll just be able to drive by and honk and, and wave at them and maybe show them a sign, maybe drop them off a card. Uh, we won't be getting out of our cars, but uh, we'll be celebrating and rejoicing with them. So you'll be hearing more information about that as well. So I'm just excited about an opportunity for our church to be able to get together in some form or fashion. So I just say praise the Lord for that. Uh, let me uh, just say a word of prayer and pray for you. Oh, Jesus, I love you and I thank you for everyone that's watching this right now. Lord, I just pray that you'd bless us. Pour out of your spirit on us, God. Remind us that you are in control. Remind us that you're never surprised. You're never caught off guard. You're always prepared, Lord. Uh, we may be surprised sometimes that you are never surprised. Remind us that you're faithful, God. Remind us that you're our healer. You're our provider. You're everything we need just when we need it, Lord. So, Lord, I just pray that you'd be everything we need right now during our time together. Bless us as only you can. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, happy Mother's Day. Uh, this Sunday, we're going to be celebrating mothers, and we thank God for all our mothers. God bless you. Uh, we just want to love on you. And so we want to take just a few moments. We have uh, some Mother's Day videos, some special greetings from people that you love. So just uh, moms, just gather around, sit sit back and relax, and just, just enjoy uh, what we have prepared for you. God bless you. Well, it's finally happened. You've moved out. You're on your own. Congratulations. But everyone still needs a little help sometimes. Mom, have you seen my wallet? It's in your back pocket. Nah, I checked there. Your other back pocket, dear. Ah, thanks, Mom. Introducing the Mom Personal Assistant, the only smart speaker device with all the wisdom, caring, and sage advice of a mother. Mom, please call Brad. Honey, I'm just not sure he's right for you. Just call him. Okay, calling Ryan. No, Mom, I said call Brad. Trust me. The Mom PA always has your best interests in mind. Wish me luck, Mom. Big interview today. Did you eat breakfast? Uh... Is that what you're wearing? Wait, what? <laughs> Did you even shower? She's there to provide a helping hand whenever you need it. Mom, set a timer for 40 minutes. Mom? The Mom Personal Assistant won't function until you say the magic word. Oh. Right. Mom, please set a timer for 40 minutes. Sure thing, hon, but it's only 30 minutes for that dish. The Mom PA is always correct and basically knows everything. Mom, what setting should I use for this laundry? Mom, do you think I should color my hair? Hey, Mom, can you please order mac and cheese? You still have two boxes. What? No, we're out. Did you look? Yeah, I just looked. It's gone. Do you want me to look? Uh, no, no, it's okay. I'll go look again. Try looking with your eyes this time. Based on God's perfect design, the mom personal assistant is thoughtful, kind, encouraging, and supportive. You are beautiful. It's okay. You're gonna get through this. I am so proud of you. You can change the world. But right now, hon, you really need to change your socks because they smell like a dumpster. Ugh, mom. The mom personal assistant. Always helpful, always reliable, and always there for you. Happy Mother's Day.
I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to my mom. I'm thankful for God giving us a chance to be together for as long as we have. And I just thank God for everything that you've done for me, Mom. I love you, and I hope you have a great day. I also want to say Happy Mother's Day to my North Carolina mom, Barbara Peters. Barbara, you've been an amazing influence on my life. I love you so much, and I'm thankful every day for you. I hope you all have a great day. Hey, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Grandma, if you're watching, Happy Mother's Day to you, too. Thank you for your godly example. Thanks for your example in prayer and your consistent example of God's grace in my life. I love you. Hey mom, I just want to say thank you for always being in my corner in the best and the worst times. Thank you for teaching me to love God and to love others above all else. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to my mom, Miss Julia Bailey. And um, I just want to show you a picture of my mom so you'll know what she looks like right here. Now, you might say that's not a very becoming picture, but it really illustrates what kind of person my mom is. She's always, always, always thinking about other people. This picture was actually taken um, in 2018, the very day or the very day after a hurricane came right through her area where she lives and destroyed her neighbor across the street, destroyed their home and just wreaked havoc in that area. Just by the grace of God, her property was pretty much spared other than some downed trees and one that had fell on her outbuilding. She had gone to Domino's to get pizza and salads for all her neighbors that day because she felt like she needed to do something and that's just who my mom is. And I love her and honor her. And I wish I was a whole lot more like her. But um, this is my mom. And she is a beautiful lady. And she's a beautiful saint of God. And I'm thankful to have her with me still. And I want her to have a very happy Mother's Day. And let her know that I love her very much. Hey, Mom. Just wanted to uh, to wish you a happy Mother's Day. Um, <clears throat> I couldn't have asked or been given a better mom. I've seen you um, be a, a caregiver. I've seen you be a uh, advice giver. I've even seen you be the mom, mama bear, um, coming to the rescue and. Um, you know, you and not only you, but you and dad both, but, um, you long before dad got saved, um, set a path, uh, before me, uh, to, to put me in the right direction or to point me in the right direction. And I know I've probably caused you a lot of, um, time and worrying and praying over me. And, uh, I just wanted to say that I appreciate it. And I love you for everything that you've done. I appreciate everything that you've done. Uh, for me and um, and I, I just I wish I could even repay it a single bit of it but um, thank you so much and I love you happy Mother's Day mom hey mom happy Mother's Day I just wanted to let you know that I love you so much and so thankful for all that you do for me and you're the best mom and nana that we could ever hope for um, I just love you so much and thank you Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. I miss you and I hope y'all have a good Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms at church. I can't wait to hug y'all. A happy, a special Happy Mother's Day to my mom because she's on her up for a week. I love y'all. Happy Mother's Day to all those amazing mothers in our church, including my own. I love you guys all so much, and I can't wait to see you Sunday morning. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms and grandmoms out there. I hope you enjoy your day. Know that you are loved, you are cared for, and 
enjoy your special day. To all my church moms out there that are so good to me, that have adopted me into your life throughout the years, has prayed over me, loved on me, and accepted me, thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day to you. You know who you are. You have a special place in my heart forever. A special Happy Mother's Day to my Aunt Becky, who is so good to me always and is always in the role of a mom to me when she never has to be, but she always is. Happy Mother's Day to you, sweet woman. Enjoy your day. You are loved and cherished more than you will ever know. And a happy Mother's Day to my mama, Tanya. Um, Tant, who is so wonderful to me, um, and thank you for all your prayers throughout the years and your love. Um, we love you, and we hope you have a happy Mother's Day. And to all the bonus moms or the aunties or the the big sisters that are being moms out there, and you may not be called a mom tomorrow, but you celebrate tomorrow. Thank you for doing what you do um, every single day, loving on the kids that you love on, praying over and taking care of the kids that you take care of. May God bless you and keep you. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there, and I hope y'all have a wonderful day. God bless you. I do want to say thank you to my mom, and thank you for everything that you've done for me. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. We appreciate you. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day to all the amazing grandmas and moms at our church. We appreciate y'all and can't wait to get back with y'all. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. I want to say Happy Mother's Day to my mom, my grandma, and my great-grandma. Thank you so much for being there for me and just being a great mother to all three of you and to me. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. I hope you are all having a great Mother's Day. I just want to hop on here and say Happy Mother's Day to all of my friends and family and the church, and I love all of you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mama, and Happy Mother's Day, Grandma. I love you. Stay safe, y'all, and I'll see. I hopefully we'll see y'all in the next couple weeks. Happy Mother's Day to the best mom in the world. Happy Mother's Day. You truly are the very best mother in the whole world wide. We couldn't have asked for a better mama, and we truly are very blessed. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. We love you. All right. Look at Molly. Look at Molly. Oh. Say Happy Mother's Day. There you go. Hey, guys. Happy Mother's Day. Um, just wanted to wish my mom and all of our wonderful ladies that go to our church a wonderful happy mother's day i love each and every single one of you and i wish so bad that we could be together you guys stay safe keep them hands washed so that we can get back into the church of god of prophecy i love you all so much bye Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Happy Mother's Day to our moms. We love y'all. Okay, say hello, church friends. 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 Hello, but she wouldn't let obstacles get in the way of our dreams. Her creativity found a way to make the impossible possible. While taking care of business, she was taking care of life. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to cut boys' hair at home. She saw a dump truck load of lemons and made the best lemonade ever. In a moment, her living room became a classroom. She stood in the path of an approaching enemy and said, not my family, not this time. Never have we needed those attributes more. And mom, you've met the challenge. For all you've done, thank you.
Thank you. Wasn't that just wonderful? Oh, we love you, moms. We honor you, and I hope you just have a wonderful day. I know this day is going to be a little bit different than most Mother's Day uh, may be, but you just enjoy it. Enjoy time with your family. Enjoy, enjoy being loved. Uh, we've been uh, talking about core values recently, and today we're going to talk about the core value or the essential value of love. So uh, pay attention to God's word and what God has to say to us through his holy word. Core values. Last week we talked about core values, the core value of prayer. Core values are the very essentials that guide our personal conduct and our relationship with others. Our core values in the Church of God of Prophecy are prayer, developing leaders, harvest, love, and biblical stewardship. Today, I thought since we're focusing on Mother's Day and we think about a mother's love, we're going to focus on the topic of love. Before I get to the message, I just want to remind you that recently many people were honoring teachers and we honor all the teachers among us. We're thankful for them. In fact, some of you parents have had an opportunity to appreciate teachers even more than you ever have before since you've had to have school at home. Well, here are some interesting answers from students that will lead us to our message today. The first one, the question was asked, draw a picture of what you will look like in 100 years. In 100 years, I will be blank years old. So Warren decided to draw his picture. Rest in peace. God bless you, Warren. Another young person was asked, or imagine that you lived at the same time as Abraham Lincoln. What would you say to him or ask him? Their answer was, I'd tell him not to go to a play ever. Good answer. Next, here's cause and effect. Tony practices a piano 20 minutes a day. Effect, according to one young man, he is a big nerd. Now we have somebody who was kind enough to draw a picture of their teacher, Mrs. Edwards. They said, I like Mrs. Edwards. She is my teacher. I like her when she does meth with me. Well, I won't say too much about that. Here's the creative one, maybe a future engineer. The problem was find X. You got five and three and X. And this bright young person circled it and said, here it is. Next, we have Frankie. Frankie had to fill in the blank. I earn money at home by, and his answer was, I don't. I am a freeloader. Next, the question was, and they got it wrong, it's crossed out and read, why are there rings on Saturn? Because God liked it, so he put a ring on it. I don't think the teacher was having a good day. She marked it off as incorrect and said Saturn was not a single lady. Here's another one. To change centimeters to meters, you do what? Well, just take out centa. Then you have meters. Bright young person. Next is write an example of a risk. And the student said this. Yeah, that was a risk. I, I think the teacher was having a good day. They gave them a check mark on that one. I don't know if red means uh, good or bad, but anyway, that was a risk to be sure. Question. Where was the American Declaration of Independence signed? At the bottom. Well, of course, I would agree with that answer. And now here's some math boxes. You're supposed to write less than or greater than. At least that's what you're supposed to do. But this precious young student just saw the question as right or. So they put for A through E or, 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 or. Well, maybe they were having a bad day. And now here's a little geometry for you. Hope, bless her heart, said, name the quadrilateral. And so she named every one of them. She named number one, Bob, number two, Sam, number three, Harry, number four, Tedison, and number five, number five, Kate. Well, and last but not least, here's for an extra credit. What is the strongest force on earth? Different types of rocks. The answer was supposed to be, I think, C maybe sedimentary rock but this young person had some great insight what's the strongest force on earth love is the strongest force force on earth well let's talk about love for God so loved the world the scripture says a very familiar scripture to us for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord, for your word. When the Church of God of Prophecy in North Carolina was developing their Vision 2020 summary doc document in 2010, they wrote this. John 3.16 calls for love to have tangible expression, for God so loved that he gave. Therefore, it can be said that love is lively, passionate praise, adoration, thanksgiving, and worship to our God, and loving care for his people. Love is outreach to people, our families, the community, and the world. Love is value added to people. It celebrates all people, sacrifices personal time, fellowships, extends warm expressions, provides support and honest acceptance, and love always makes people feel better. It equips and develops the believer to serve, to mature, minister to others, and to prepare for Christ's return. This is love, and it is love that is the true motivation for everything we do. For to harvest souls and not love is to miss the point. Jesus' response to those who carry out these functions without love is, I never knew you. In fact, the Bible presents love as the motive for our response to God's grace. We love because we have been loved. We harvest because of love. We pray because of his love. We develop people because of his love. We practice biblical stewardship because of his love. Love is the supreme thing. One of the problems in the world today is that people who know John 3.16 don't practice 1 John 3.16. A lot of people know John 3.16. What about 1 John 3.16? says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. In 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul is teaching the early church about spiritual gifts and also how important each member is in the body. He then gives us specific details about understanding the role of speaking in tongues and prophecy in the church. That's the context of this passage I'm going to share with you today. Right in the middle of these topics, he addresses a timeless discourse on what matters most in life. He says in 1 Corinthians 13, beginning at verse 1, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. And may God add his blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his word. If we were together right now, I would ask you to say amen. Let's look at verses 4 to 7 in another version that might sound a little more comfortable to your ears. This is the paraphrase by Eugene Peterson called The Message. He puts it this way, love never gives up. Love cares for others more, love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Now, for something that might be uncomfortable, try substituting, substituting your name for love. In other words, I might say, less never gives up. 
Less cares more for others than self. Less doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head. Less isn't always me first. Less doesn't fly off the handle. Less always trusts God and always looks for the best. That's a little more uncomfortable sometimes, but it's a good idea. So how can we tell if we have love? Well, Jesus resurrected, and when his followers found the grave, it was empty, and his grave clothes were still there. Lazarus was raised from the dead, but still wrapped in his grave clothes. He had life, but not liberty. He, he was confined. He, he was alive, but he just couldn't move around, just like some Christians. They've received new life, but they can't move or function properly because they're still wrapped up in the grave clothes of tradition or worldliness, resentment, unforgiveness, or, or grave clothes of a lack of love. How can we effectively minister to a lost and dying world without love? We, we can't. We have to have love. How can we tell if we have love? Listen. Listen to the word of God. Jesus said, Luke 6, 45, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. How will we tell if we have love? Listen. We need to listen to people. Listen and care about what they have to say. God gave us two ears and one mouth. Maybe we should be listening twice as much as we talk. That's a challenge for some people. Now, Pastor Rick Warren did a series back in 2014. I believe it was July. You make me crazy. And who's pushing your buttons? And here's what he said about how we, what we can say can get us in trouble. He's talking about the tongue. He said, when I get angry, my mouth reveals what's inside my heart. A harsh tongue reveals an angry heart. A negative tongue reveals a fearful heart. A boasting tongue reveals an insecure heart. An overactive tongue reveals an unsettled heart. A judgmental tongue reveals a guilty heart. The most judgmental people are those who feel guilt the most. A critical tongue reveals a bitter heart. A filthy tongue reveals an unclean heart. Listen to this. Rick Warren said, an, un an encouraging tongue reveals a happy heart. A gentle tongue reveals a loving heart. And a controlled tongue reveals a peaceful heart. People are going to know if we love them by what we say, how we treat them, what we do. What do we need in order to have love rule our lives? We need a heart transplant. And God specializes in them. Psalm 51 and 10 says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. That's what we need, a pure heart. We need to be full of love. There's all kinds of tragedies going around in this world. There's tragedies going on in our country. There's violence. There's racism. There's prejudice. There's, there's, there's abuse within families. What we need to replace all that is love. What people need is a transformation of the heart and of the mind. And that can only be done through the love of God. Let me pray. Uh, dear Jesus, love on us. Bless us, God. Love through us. Let your love become alive in us, Jesus. Do these things, God, because you are love. And your word is true. Be faithful to your word in this, God. I know you will. Lord, you said ask, seek, and knock. And so we're asking you right now. We're asking you because we don't have to give what the world needs except what we get from you. And that is your love. This world needs love. Our communities need love. Our families need love. I need love in my heart. Each one listening needs love. Your love, Jesus. Fill us with love, Lord. Bless us today. Those that are so privileged and honored to be able to even speak with their mother should count their blessings. Thank you, Lord. And perhaps for those who've lost their mothers, Lord, we're able to um, honor them, honor their memory by loving others. Help us to do that, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that uh, with, with your help and grace, and, and Lord, we just trust you that you'll help us to be able to get together soon. Even if it's in parked cars in the parking lot, that'll be a move in the right direction. Help us all to uh, be, uh, take the necessary precautions to keep ourselves safe and healthy, especially to look after those that are the most vulnerable, to take care of them, Jesus. Lord, help us, love on us. Thank you for this time together, for your word. 
I believe your word is truth and it will accomplish exactly what you want it to. And I praise you in Jesus' name. Thank the Lord for his word. Thank the Lord for the truth about love. God is love and he loves you. He cares about you. I want you to remind you that Jesus loves you so much. He died for you. Thank you, Jesus. So we worship the Lord. We worship the Lord in our time together, even though we can't be together physically. We're, we're together as we've spent this time uh, with each other. And so I thank God for that. Another way you can worship the Lord is with your tithes and offerings. Uh, everyone has been very faithful to give. And I just encourage you to continue to worship the Lord in your giving. You can give online, you can mail your offerings to the church, you can call me and arrange to drop it by. However you'd like to do that, we'd be glad to work with you. And I say thank the Lord uh, for faithful giving. God is good. Some of you may have received a stimulus check you weren't planning on this year. That's a good opportunity to be reminded about how to tithe. So uh, tithe and give and let the Lord bless you. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Praise the Lord. I'd like to end our time together with uh, a little bit of worship. I'm going to share with you a worship song by Jensen Franklin. It's several years ago. I played it during my private devotion time this week, and I was just blessed. And so I want you to be blessed. Worship the Lord together with me as we just sing glory to his name and give honor to his name, for he is worthy. God bless you. The Lord willing, I'll see you soon. I love you. I'm praying for you. If I can do anything at all for you, call me. God bless you. I sing praises to your name. Sing it with me. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and great.
you one more time. 